What is up, guys? It's Aaron, the trucking guy. We're back bringing you some more. Be a doozy. This is something that really gets me hot. I don't know about you guys, but it does. And let's talk about it. Freight guards, right? What is a freight guard? How can you get it removed? We're going to say, what tips can you do? What does it mean to your business? How can it affect you? And a couple of ways that you can, you know, work on this. There's not a whole lot you can do, unfortunately, guys. So let's get right into it. What is a freight guard? And what does it mean to your business? So a freight guard mm -hmm. is something that a broker uh, can go into either on truck stop if they use that software for their dispatching and their broker work as, back, as far as a back office TMS or carrier 411 owned by a guy who's kind of like a freaking Karen, this Darren, uh, Darren Brewer guy. But basically it's been around for a while and it's a way to protect brokers so that they can go look up uh, bad carriers or uh, you know unethical carriers. So there is a needed... Uh, you know, resource out there for that, because just like you guys know that there's a shit ton of unethical brokers, there is a ton, if not even more unethical carriers, right? So they developed the software. Um, unfortunately, anybody can open a business and you can be a, you know, person like a Karen who can get to the top of a business. If you're someone who's good at running a business and use a service like this and get a bunch of brokers to subscribe to it. Now, I don't really think if you go look at the comments that they were prepared and they don't have a way around this to get the, the unethical brokers to not use it as a malice uh, weapon or tool against people because they're pissy, right? A lot of freight brokers, as we know it, guys, are a bunch of bitch frat boys. Let's talk about it, okay? What does that mean? Let's get into it. If I'm a broker, which we are, and I have been on this side of it for any reason right now, I can log into Care 401. I can log into Truck Stop. I can log into Watchdog or some of these softwares that, you know, like RMIS that monitor carriers. And I can leave a, you know, a freight guard or a bad review. Or on my system, I can blacklist you as a carrier, right? If I post a load and you call and book that load and cancel for any reason or whatever, you piss me off. You're, you know, uh, stupid or slow. Or if I was a douchebag and say I was someone who, you know, watched a Wolf of Wall Street movie and thought I'm just going to treat every carrier however I want, I can put a freight guard out there, right? It's super easy. It's super simple. And I can edit and update that freight guard and remove it myself. Right now, if I'm the one that put it on there, um, that doesn't mean it's basically a bad review. It's like a shitty Google review. Right. It, it doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day to your business if you do good business. Now, if you're a new company, the goal is to just do good business. Don't do unethical things. Don't book a load and then find a higher paying load and cancel the one that you booked. Don't do things that deserve you to get a freight guard right now. What type of things can get you a freight guard? Um, being late, okay, is one. If you had a certain time you were supposed to be there and you didn't meet that time, for whatever reason, they can give you a freight guard and it may be earned. Right now, as we know as carriers uh, and people who are ethical brokers, there's a lot of moving pieces in the trucking business. Breakdowns happen, things happen, you know, flat tires, delays, traffic, weather conditions, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever. But in the event that there's a certain uh, you know, time that needs to be met as a business, you need to ethically negotiate. Hey, I'm sorry, we're late. Uh, you know, I would, I would gladly, you know, compensate you or pay for the crane or, or, or whatever it is. I'll eat the detention fees, whatever it is you as a business, you're responsible to get that load there on time. So you need to eat whatever it is so that the broker is not responsible, but you got to realize that he went out and earned that business, which is very difficult to do to get anybody to trust you and earn business. So when he loses that business, they become very upset because of how difficult it is to go get business. OK, and you got to realize they have no trucks. They have all the power. They're having some of the same issues that you have just in a different way. Right. So when a truck is late, it reflects poorly on them. And so that in turn is not good business. If you're not willing to eat that because of your mistake, whatever it is, breakdown, failure, poor scheduling, your driver slept in, whatever that is, if you're not willing to eat that, then that's not good business practice, right? Now, because again, things happen, but it is your responsibility. You're late. If I'm a broker, I booked with you. You were supposed to be on time. You weren't. Doesn't matter the reason. So I need you to take care of that. And that's just cost of doing business, guys. It's not going to happen all the time. And it should be the, the small amount of the time and not the majority of the time. Now, 
what else can be something that's going to get you a freight guard? The number one that I've seen is canceling loads, right? So when we book a load, if a driver owner operator says, I'm not taking that load or quits or something happens and we've signed a rate con and we have to call back, say, hey, we have to cancel um, nine times out of 10, it's fine. But you're always going to have that one frat boy who had a very difficult time getting anybody to take that load, whether it was cheap, it was a tough lane. Uh, you know, uh, he needed, he promised his carrier that he's going to get it done in a certain amount of time. And now it's been on the load board for two days or all day or three days. And he couldn't get anybody to cover it. You call and book it. And now he wants to hold you hostage, right? That's basically what happens in these instances. And they don't have any, um, safety protocol to stop these type of people from taking it out on the carrier. Because we are a carrier, we have a right to say, I don't want that load or, you know, whatever the reason is, right? My truck went down. Now, whenever we do ethical business, if my truck does break down or is stuck in traffic or blew up or caught on fire or whatever, we document that with pictures and videos and send them over to the brokers and the customers say, hey, this really did happen, you know, because they get tired of hearing it because of the 80% of douchebag carriers that say, oh, we broke down, whatever. And they really just went and got a different load or they didn't want to take that load or they thought about it afterwards and they wasn't making the money because, you know, their dispatcher wasn't fast enough at deriving the right rates. Uh, the right profit, the right cost, it was put them in a bad area, whatever the reason is, they decided to change their mind and not take the load. Well, that is a problem because if I call as a broker and tell my customer, hey, I have a truck and now I don't have a truck, I look like an idiot. And anytime you make somebody look like an asshole, it's not a good business, right? It's not going to work out long term. So that's the number one thing is canceling loads in any situation is going to probably get you a freight guard, especially now when there's so much fraud happening that they are wanting to put a freight guard on you every day for whatever reason. Okay. Now, another thing can be breakdowns, unethical business practices. Um, one thing when we hired dispatchers in the past, this has gotten us freight guards where the dispatcher unbeknownst to us, which means we didn't know was cussing out the brokers. You, this loads too effing cheap. You guys are idiots. F you guys, you should be ashamed of yourself. What, you know, whatever the reason is that he felt to be unethical he took that upon himself and it was not a good reflection of how we do business. But because we did not know about it, this continued to happen for, you know, three, six months, a year. And we were notified after the fact. But then, uh, you know, it was too late because you have all these freight guards and it's it's difficult to overcome them. It can be done, uh, but it's very difficult because you've pissed off that person and they have a sour taste in their mouth about you and your company because of this person, right? You might have five dispatchers and be a pretty big company. And this one dispatcher was an idiot and now you can't work with them, but they also put a freight guard out there. And because of the amount of fraud, a lot of new brokers or new dispatchers or agents, when they see you call on that and they're checking you, that freight guard pops up and like, oh, we can't work with you because it said freight guard, right? So it doesn't really do the industry justice. It doesn't, it doesn't. It's kind of a two-way street, guys. There, there, there's a, a reason for it being there because of the amount of unethical people on the internet um, or on, in, in, the, in the logistics space that are double brokers, that are you know fraud, that are stealing loads, that are whatever. They're doing a lot of fraud. And so the brokers needed a way to protect themselves from that. So that's how this was born, right? But the problem is they use it... Uh, for ill-willed intentions, okay, against the good people, okay? Now, the way I see it, if you have a good carrier that you've worked with many times over and that person happened to be late or have a breakdown, you know, I we recently gotten one for a breakdown and I did everything I could and the guy was friggin' nuts, right? Absolutely nuts. I said, I'd send a truck over there to recover it, do this, do that. He wasn't hearing it. You know, he was a big badass. I've got a $3 million house. You're an idiot. F you, F your company. I'm putting freight guards on it. You know, it's too, it was crazy. So that's the type of person that's on the other end of the phone. And you have to realize, look, there's not much you can do in that situation. So moving forward, what options do you have? Let's say this happens to you and your company. You got a freight guard. My clients call me all the time. Hey, I got a freight guard. Hey, I got a freight guard. And they're freaked out. They think it's this like, you know, federal thing or it's FMCSA thing. And it's actually not. It's the equivalent of a shitty Google review. That's it. Okay, it's on a website that brokers use to dictate, oh, am I going to use this or not? Am I going to use this guy or this carrier or this truck or not? That's it. So you have a decision to be made. The new person saying, are we going to use them or not and why? Okay, now a lot of times they see the freight guard and they don't even read it. Okay, so that that's one of the biggest red flags is you have to learn to negotiate over that. Okay, is that they see the freight guard like, oh, shit, no, nope, can't use you. Okay, so you have to say, look, I do have a freight guard. Here's why it was an unethical broker, or maybe you deserved it. And you're like, hey, I did. We had, we had a mistake. Here's what it is. Okay. I'm going to give you in a minute one of the top 
negotiation uh, strategies that I use to overcome that objection. All right. Now, um, if you get one, what do you do? And like I said, how are you going to get it? Uh, your dispatcher being an a-hole, um, canceling a load, being unethical, um, you know, whatever it is, there's a lot of reasons why you can get one, but what are you going to do if you get one? Okay. Now the options that you have, the only person who can remove it, edit it or change anything to it is the person that gave it to you. Okay. That broker, that agent. All right. Now there's a few things. It depends on if it's a big company or a mom and pop company. A lot of times what you're going to see is these come from the mom and pop companies, the bigger, unless you do something really bad, uh, you know, the land stars of the world, the TMCs of the world, they're not going to go put a freight guard on you. Okay. The reason why is because they're carriers themselves and they understand that that really can affect you and it's just not necessary. Um, but again, at the end of the day, you have the smaller companies that are willing to do it, some agents, but uh, it's more of just being a snitch. You're going out there like a Karen and being a little, basically, let's call it what it is, a bitch snitch and saying, hey, you know, they were late, whatever. Now, at the end of the day, most of the freight guards that they're putting on carriers are what's called double broker, right? Now, there's different types of freight guards. You, it can be from being late. It can be from not having good communication. It can be a lot of things. So you may have one on there that's deserving, okay, not communicating well, uh, you know, being late, something like that. And, there, and, and really, you can try to get that removed and try to negotiate with the person that put it on there, but you probably deserved it for whatever reason. So just do better business and, and you won't get them, you know? But if you get one, like for instance, we got one on our company that was a double broker. Now we don't double broker, okay? That is unethical. We do everything legal, moral, ethical here. But we got one, I called the guy and I said, look, man, it was over a late delivery or a cancellation. I'm sorry, it was over a cancellation. And I said, it was over a cancellation. We have a right to cancel the load. We canceled the load within 15 minutes of booking the load. I think it was even less than 15 minutes. It was like 10 minutes. So you had ample time, ample opportunity to recover the load. Just because you can't, that is a lack of ability on your part, okay? Now, the downside is that my dispatcher did sign the rate confirmation. And when we took it to the owner operator, he threw a fit, wouldn't do it. And we don't allow that here. So I did end up letting that guy go. And saying, hey, you're not going to take this low. We've already signed for it. We're going to let you go because we don't do that. Because we called, checked it with him. Do you want to take the load? Yes, I want to take the load. Okay, cool. We're good to go. So from that point, we have to ethically take the load and do what we have to do. Right? No matter whether you found a better one or whatever, doesn't matter. You have to do what you say you're going to do and do good business. So he didn't do that. And this, this was a good company. And they were just being pissy about it. And he said, look, my customer got pissed. Uh, I told him I had a truck coming over there. Then I had to call him back and tell him that I don't have a truck coming over there. And he made me look like an idiot. And they told me they didn't want to do business with me anymore. And this is a client that could have been hundred thousand dollars a year for me. So I understood that. And I said, look, uh, you know, I, I've, I've negotiated with the guy. It took us two years to get it off. And I said, you know, it's cost me business now for years. It's cost you business. I think we're both even, let me send you over a steak dinner. Let me, you know, give you a discounted rate you know, let's do what we can to kind of uh, remedy this and get back on a, on a level playing field, at least take it from the double broker status to we canceled a load or something like that. So that's, it's, it's, it's deserving and it's not uh, unethical. And, and he, you know, him hot around, I finally got into at least take it down to where we canceled the load. Okay. Cause double broker, as soon as a broker sees that, the, it, it, it's over. They're like, no, we're not working with you because that's, they, they see you as fraud. They see you as a double broker, even though you may not be one. So that's where, uh, carrier 411 and these freight guards are really bullshit because they can say anything they want. We have no recourse of action. There are three pro tips that I can give you if you go book a call with me today, consulttruckingguy.com, that I won't discuss in this video. But there are three pro tips that you can do to really, you know, push that ball over into their court and, and get control of the situation. But let's just talk about it for an instance. Let's say, okay. Uh, if you do get one of these, what can you do to say to a new company when you call to book a load, they say, we can't work with you. You have a freight guard. Now, one of two things, there's two situations that'll happen with this. One, you've already worked with that company before and proven yourself on other loads and they're good with you, but you have a freight guard now and they're, they're changing the way they do things and they don't work with companies that have freight guards. This is what I've said in the past. Look, um, we understand we have a freight guard. It was from an unethical broker or a, you know, disputed situation that we're working through right now. Here's what I ask you. We've already worked for you guys. 
we've done work four, five, 10 times, however many, and every time we've executed well. I would love to be judged on the 90% that we do well and not the 10% that we got wrong. We did cancel a load or we did show up late, but trucking has a lot of moving pieces and we do everything we can to operate legal, moral, ethical business and things happen. Sometimes trucks break down, sometimes things, whatever happened. In this particular case of the freight guard, a truck broke down or we were late or whatever, or my driver overslept, something happened and, and it's not a, you know, whatever double broker or, or, or it's unjust or we're working with the person or the broker was unethical because some of them, them are just assholes. You know, they're little, basically frat boy bitches and they're, they're unethical and they put this on there and it's not deserving. So we would love to continue to do business with your company the same way that we've done business with your company in the past three, four, five, 10, 15, 20 times and executed well. Now, in that case, they can go in there and that agent or that broker or that manager, whoever you have to, you know, sometimes you got to talk to uh, higher up people, give them the same exact spiel and say, look, we would love to be judged on the 99% that we do well, not the one time that we mess up. Everybody makes mistakes. You guys make mistakes. You know, it happens, right? I actually had to do this exact same thing. We were put on a do not use list with uh, a big company. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the company, but anyway, it was, uh, uh, I think John Krishner trucking or one of them we were doing a load for, right? And we've worked for them for three years, five years, whatever it was, a long time. Now, again, I have that seniority. We did good business for a long time. We had this one mistake, a dispute with a, a, a dispatcher that we hired with a broker. So I had to talk to that broker. She said, your dispatcher was an a-hole. You know, this, that, whatever. He, he cussed me out. He hung up on me, all these things. I'm like, well, I was not aware of that. We've since terminated with this guy or now I am aware of it and I'm going to terminate the guy or I'm going to, there's going to be repercussions there, but we would love to be judged on the 99% we do well and not the one time we mess up. Now, you guys are a huge company with thousands of trucks, right? I'm sure that somewhere along the way, one of your trucks has crashed, broken down, driver abandoned, driver overslept, late delivery. Things happen, okay? It's happened to you guys. It's happened to us. But we are a legal, moral, ethical you know, business that we would love to be judged on the things that we do well, which is the majority of the time and not the one time that, you know, things go down. And I would tell them, look, we're bigger than most. We have, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 trucks, whatever. Once you get to that level, we can help you consult the trucking guy. Um, you use that to your advantage and say, look, you know, judge us on what we do well and not on the one time that we made a mistake, or maybe this is not even our fault. And we're, we're working through the process to remove it because it's an unethical person. And nine times out of 10, that has worked for me. I've had to come back a couple times and use it, you know, two, three, four, five times, talk to different people and eventually get uh, through to that company. I'm not going to focus on the freight guard itself. I mean, I am, but I'm not going to focus on getting that removed because in some cases you can't. You just can't. OK, but what you can do is negotiate over it whenever you get a, hey, we can't use you because you have a freight car. Now, with new companies and you have no expertise, you haven't worked with them before. Um, it's going to be tougher for you. It just is. They're going to say, hey, a lot of new brokers. There's a lot of new brokers out there or brokers that are even in the last two years. I still consider them new. They've changed their entire way they do business to where no freight guards. They have to be basically a, a perfect safety score. Uh, you know, no, inspe no negative inspections, at least three or four inspections that were positive. They've, they've hired their standards, right? Because of the amount of fraud. And, and it's just, you know, it, it's understandable. There's so much fraud. There's so many asshole carriers doing things the wrong way that it's just justifiable. There's, there's no other way around it, guys. That's it. So what do you do in that case? You're going to have to negotiate your ass off. You're going to say, look, you know, we negotiated this rate at 2,200 before you've seen the freight guard and said, Hey, you know, we can't do it. Let me do this one for 2,000, 200 on the house. Go get yourself a steak dinner. Let me work through it. Let me, let me prove to you what I can do and the, and the amount of communication and, that we can provide, the amount of, of, of logistics support that we can provide and move forward. Okay. Sometimes that'll work in your benefit and sometimes it won't. They'll say, no, nope, can't do it. Click and hang up on you. Now you can call them again. You can call them again and just keep trying. I wouldn't give up. Right. And they're going to say, no, no, but eventually they're going to be in a place and a time and they're going to say, you know what? Yeah, we're going to give you a chance. Okay. Don't F this one up. And the truth is don't, you know, when they pick up the say, Hey guys on the way, Hey guys on site. Hey, guy picked up. Here's pictures. Hey, guy did this. Hey, guy left site. Estimated delivery is X. In route. We're doing good. Arrived at delivery. Get Just be over, you know, go over and above and beyond and over deliver on customer service for that particular time. And they'll be like, hey, I don't know why they got that freight guard. These guys did everything they said they needed to do and you're good to go. 
when given that opportunity. Now, if you fumble the ball, you don't answer, you don't communicate, something happens, whatever, you're probably not going to get a second chance. Okay. And they're going to say, oh, that's probably accurate because they're half ass carrier. Now, that's a second way that you can overcome that if you don't have the reliability. But the main goal is in the beginning, guys, don't get freight guards. Try everything you can not to, which means don't cancel loads. Don't be late. Don't try to change and negotiate rates. Whatever you signed up for and you signed that rate comp for two grand, whatever, when you deliver there, that's it. Sometimes it's unfair to carriers because, you know, they may have all you, it, you went here and now it goes 100 miles down the road, right? And what you can do is provide a, uh, rate uh, change order, but that's, they have all the power. And if you still want to get paid and you don't want a freight guard, you can't be like, well, I'm holding the fucking load hostage until you give me the hundred bucks. In the early stages of your career, I probably wouldn't do that. All right. Especially if it's with any kind of big company, I would just deliver the damn load, get done with it, move on to the next one so that you don't end up in these freight guard type of situations. All right. Now, if you want to get it removed, what can you do? The options that you have are call the broker that you dealt with that gave you the freight guard. Negotiate with them and say, hey, you know, we messed up, man, but this wasn't really deserving. You know, it's really affecting my business. What can I do to get rid of this? You know what I mean? What can I do so that we can move forward in an amicable way? Now, if you effed up and cussed them out and acted like an idiot, you're probably not going to be able to overcome that. So don't do those things. And, you, and, and, and when they act like an idiot uh, that day, then maybe you can, you know, negotiate it. Learn some tactics to negotiate with people who act like little Karen based bitches. Basically, they're going to do that because of the way they think. You know, there's someone who is, you know, entitlement. Uh, uh, someone who's uh, basically going to sit around and think, oh, you know, I'll just screw them over like this. Anybody that would think like that is obviously someone with with a, a, a piss poor mindset. Right. So you have to go in there, accept that, hey, this person is a, a, a not as smart as I am. This person is is obviously a, a, a person who thinks pessimistically, who's negative as fuck, who does not have the capability to do ethical, good business. OK, if you put something like this on there and you want to be a snitch about being late or whatever, they don't realize the implications from the other side. They've never been on this side. They don't understand that now when you try to get loads. Five out of 10 are going to say, we can't work with you. So they just, they cut the, the, the way you feed your family and the, the way you put food on the table in half. They don't understand that you're aggravated. You're upset, but you have to get into them. Okay. Get, break down that tough exterior barrier, you know, snitch bitch attitude and say, look, man, this is really affecting me. Can you help me please? You know, I'm offering to give you a discounted load on the next load. We, you know, what, what are you having a problem with? You know, what are you, what lanes are you having a trouble with that I could help you with at a discounted rate? Let's, let's remedy this relationship and go a different way with it. Right. That's an option. You may not want to, because the guy's an asshole or whatever, that's fine, but that's an option. Um, you might do one just to get the freight guard removed and then never work with them again and blacklist them with your company internally, right? Um, there are ways to leave negative reviews on brokers through DAT, through truck stop. Nobody reads them. None of the carriers read them before they book a low with a broker. So it does, it, it's kind of pointless, but you can go back against them and go to war with them and leave negative reviews. Nobody cares. Brokers don't care because they're the ones with the power that have the freight, right? Um, a second thing that you can do is uh, you know, is negotiate or discount a load or even do, Hey, I'll give you a load for free. It might be a thousand bucks, whatever. We'll do one for free. If you'll remove this for me. Okay. That's, you could get burnt. It's a risk, right? That they don't take it off and, and whatever. Uh, the third thing that you could do is say, um, Hey, I'll pay you. You know, I understand you're pissed off. You don't want to work with me no more. How much is it going to cost me to remove this? I understand I, I cost you money because of late or cancellation. And you feel some type of way about that. Let me slide you 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, whatever it is. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've had them charge me $2,500. It's fucking blackmail, but it is what it is. And say, Hey, look, just remove it. I don't give a shit. If you ever work with us again, just take the freight guard off or at least, uh, change it from, because they go in there and put double broker. That's the most, you know, negative one they can put because they know it screws you like really bad. So that's the one they always want to put. And it's not, ethical. It's not right now. Um, uh, because once you have that double broker freight guard, almost nobody will work with you. It's very, very difficult. And a lot of them will do that as a double broker right now. What I have seen also is if you cancel a load and, or you agreed to a load and then you cancel it and then you go on the low board and post your truck, right. 
um, they they go look at both of those those lanes, the one that they gave you, and then they look and see that you posted. They're going to say, oh, well, that's a double broker, but it's not. It's just you're, you're looking for another broker or another carrier or another broker to book you, right? So you have to really think about that. Do good business. Don't cancel. Try not to be late. Uh, you know, if you're going to break down, be as transparent as possible. Um, you know, try to get your feelers and antennas out there when you're working on the phone, booking loads of brokers and you, you, you're, you're calling about the load initially. I've had them, you know, we didn't even have a load with them and didn't even have a, a negotiated load up and, and, and they're just like, fuck you click and then go do a freight guard on me over a phone call inquiring about a load. Right. And that can happen. Um, so you have to be very, you know, careful about who you talk to on the phone of these brokers. And look at them and say, this guy's crazy. I don't want to haul this load. I don't care how good it is. I don't care if they credit check, how good it pays. This, this guy's too iffy, right? This person is too iffy. Um, it, it, they, they act crazy, shady, weird on the phone. They act like, you know, they're, they're telling you their life story and they sound like a dramatic fucking person. Don't work with them because that's just going to roll over and play over into whatever you do. If you make one mistake, one late, not answer the phone, whatever it is. Um, you know, that they're going to, that's how they're going to act. And that's the way they, they perceive that as normal to them where it's not normal in our world or your world. Right. So there are a few other things that you can do. It's not the end all be all you can negotiate over top of it. Um, you do have 72 hours to respond. If you do get one through care 411, um, or one of these other sites, they're going to send you an email saying, Hey, you know, uh, respond with what you think happened or whatever. And so you can have a response in there, What you need to do at a bare minimum, because brokers can see both. They can say, okay, they said, I'll double broker. You can say, nope, unethical guy. All we did was cancel a load. We gave him 15 minutes to recover. And, um, he put a double broker thing on us. Right. So you can respond and say, Hey, you know, judge us on the 90% that we do well. We've done multiple loads for this company, but this agent is crazy and unethical and, and acted this way, cussed us out, whatever. Now, Anytime that you can provide evidence to that fact, whether it be text messages, uh, recorded calls, whatever you can, it's going to help you any chance you can. I've had recorded calls and text messages where I've had to go above and beyond brokers that even Landstar or whoever and go to their uh, account resolution team and say, look, here's what this guy was talking to us like. Here's how he acted. Here's how we acted. He was unprofessional. This, 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 and prove our way out of it. And they say, okay, you're taking off the blacklist. You're taking off the do not use list. You know, we're going to remove this freight guard, whatever. But it's something you just have to do a business when they do these type of things. And we don't have much recourse of action is you have to deal with it. It's something that you got to come into the office, but man, shit, I got to deal with this now. Okay. Um, but again, double broker is the worst one that you can get. You need to respond. Um, if a new broker, uh, puts a freight guard on you, you know what, and won't work with you. Um, what are you going to do? There's not much you can do. If you're a new company and you don't have proven good business and we're going into a new era of trucking where freight guard is like their favorite word, F you putting a freight guard, F you putting a freight guard out of every broker, every agent's mouth, right? Because they see the implications of how it can affect carriers. But here's the thing, guys. Um, even on the interview, if you go to freight waves and look up this Darren Brewer, you know, fucking caring guy, I see it from both perspectives. Okay. But I see it from, you know, it should not have the effect uh, that, you know, these guys who use truck stop, you know, they go look it up or care for one to, to, to negatively impact the, the carriers in such a bad way. They should be able to, they should have to prove what happened. And then there should be some sort of intermediary that can say, okay, they really are a double broker. Okay. They really did cancel a load. It, it, it needs to be a, a, a more in-depth process than just letting them give us a, a, an essence. They could go do a Google review the same way, go on Google type. You guys suck you know, double broker and, and leave it up there. Right now, nobody looks at the Google review. Nobody gives a shit as far as the carry go. Cause we get the work from the brokers or customers. So they all use the same portal and that just happens to be how it is. But at the end of the day, they need to have some sort of, 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 of you know, recourse of action towards brokers or a more in-depth process. And if you go look at the reviews, they're terrible. I mean, just thousands of negative reviews of carriers that have been burnt by shitty brokers. Now I would say that probably 50 of them 50% of them deserved it. They did something wrong. They tried to change the quote, hold the load hostage. I've, I've seen and dealt with that myself. Um, so, and, you know, you don't get to be in this game in over a decade like I have by doing things like that. Now, are there some situations where that was necessary? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'll be glad to explain those to you. Go to consultthetruckingguy.com. But not every situation. You have to run legal, moral, ethical business in order to make it and survive in this game. 
and uh, in order to overcome these things. Now, there is a few, two or three pro tips that I can help you with. Reach out to me and I can tell you what those are in order to overcome and remove these freight guards. But you have the option to negotiate uh, with them to just ask them to remove it, say it wasn't necessary, uh, offer a discounted load or a free load, offer to pay them to take it off. But that's about it. That's really all you have, guys. Um, it does suck. It's unfair. It's unjust. There's not much you can do about it, but you cannot think of it like it's this big deal and this thing. You, you have to just go into it and say, okay, what I'm going to have to do now is my team, my dispatch team are going to have to negotiate over the fact, hey, we're ethical, we're legal, we're moral. You know, Give us a chance and, and get good at negotiating that and then hopefully get into direct customers where you're not even going to have to really worry or rely on brokers at such an extent that the damn freight guard even affects you anyway. Also, the older the freight guard, the better. Because they're gonna be like, hey, that's three years ago, you know, whatever, you're still in business. So they take that into consideration. But those are, are important factors. That's how you can deal with it and dispute it, is learn to overcome it, negotiate it, go back to the broker that gave it to you and, and use those tactics. That's all I got for you. Hopefully this helps, guys. I look forward to seeing you on our side. Hopefully it benefits your business and your company. If you did get a freight guard and you're looking for ways to get it removed, reach out to me. I would love to help you with that aspect. We'll catch you on the next one.